There are, uh, this is a participatory program in which you will also, you're not just going to sit and listen, you're going to participate also. And at this time, we're going to call in, on uh, Sister Marlene Paris, who would do a declaration. We want to show our pastor how committed we are, how much God has done, and how much we appreciate what he has done in our lives this far. So this is one way in which we say thank you and we appreciate you. slight adjustment here. Why do we celebrate our pastor? A pastor's appreciation month is set aside every October to remind us of the importance of pastors in our lives and how we should respond. Have you ever walked in your pastor's shoe and gone where his feet have trod? Have you ever thought of what he means to us and your knees giving thanks to God. Have you ever told him thank you for being there when times are tough, for comforting words and fervent prayers, when trials come and the storms of life are rough? He answers our calls in the middle of the night and tells us not to worry for he will be there. He gives us his comfort of quiet rest, encourages his family to sacrifice with him, and comes with prayers and comforts to share. Why do we celebrate our pastor? Have you ever thought to say thank you, pastor, for preaching God's word to help us understand? For all the times he has asked us to do things that will lend us a helpful hand, if you have never thought about these things or about why you should say thank you, October presents a sterling opportunity for each of us to say thank you and show appreciation to our pastor and his family. When you pray, put him and his family at the top of the list. Ask the Lord to surround them with loving care, to give them strength and walk with them. To help them with the burdens that they must bear. Have you ever walked in your pastor's shoe? Have you ever thought of what it means to us? And on your knees, giving thanks to God? If you haven't, then that's why we celebrate Pastor's Appreciation Day. Pastor, we love you. We appreciate you. And at this time, we'll have Ms. Marlene Paris. Good morning, church. And now we will engage in the responsive reading. I don't know if your portion is going to be up on the screen. Answering God's call to the ministry, you have obeyed his will for your life. We celebrate your call. Thank you. Your call has come in answer to the prayers of God's people that he would send forth laborers into the harvest fields of our world. We celebrate your call. Your call comes through your love for lost souls. We celebrate your call and commit ourselves to be witness. 
Your call is evident in your concern for God's people and your spiritual service to us. To love and serve one another in Christ. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Paris. Amen, amen. This is Lighthouse, and God is here. Now, have you noticed that the uh, the light has gotten a little brighter? I don't know if you notice, but we have the little beacons of light that are coming to bless our souls. And while they do so, I would remiss if I didn't just uh, share with you a bit of information here and how I feel and how all of us feel about our pastor and the joy that we feel by having him with us. Pastor Reverend and First Lady Cameron, we rejoice that the value of your labor in Guyana was recognized elsewhere, which is here, and that you were called into a wider field where your talents as preacher of the gospel, selfless giving, and your exemplary Christian life has borne greater fruits in these green fields and pastures you consistently nurture and cultivate. When you hear green fields and pastures, maybe you wonder, what are we talking about? Well, we have been able to uh, bud, blossom, and bloom fields. Not only nationally, but internationally. When I talk about those fields that are being cultivated, I'm talking about the lovely LHMI Lighthouse Ministries International here in beautiful Beltsville, Maryland. I also talk about LHMI, Lighthouse Ministries International, in Georgetown, Guyana. And last but not least, and it's not the last, we're just continuing. Lighthouse Ministries International in Suriname. This is how much, yes, this deserve a round of applause. That's how much those are the fields that are being cultivated by our pastor and overseer of these churches nationally and internationally. The Lord has certainly blessed us and we are proud to have a blessed man, a man of God, along with a beautiful first lady. They said what? Behind every good man? I think it's not behind. Besides, hand in hand, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gift from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I notice that the, sh the light is shining now, and our, our little beacons of light, we want to give them a round of applause. And you know, this is just to introduce them to the stage, but when they leave the stage, you're going to see why. Okay? Little beacons of light, let us give them a warm welcome.
pastor's heart. A pastor's heart is protected and guards his flocks from Satan's snares. A pastor's heart is attentive and seeks to know his people's cares. A pastor's heart is sacrificial and for his sheep will give his all. A pastor's heart is tender and listens to the Spirit's call. A pastor's heart is obedient and heeds the master's commands. A pastor's heart is reflective and considers he is but a man. I said a prayer for you today. I said a prayer for you today and knew that God had heard. I felt the answer in my heart, although he spoke no words. I didn't ask for wealth or fame. I knew you wouldn't mind. I asked for treasures of a form your lasting kind. I asked that he'd be near you at the start of each new day to grant you help and blessings and friends to share your way. I asked for blessings in all things great and small. But it was his loving care I prayed for the most of all. My pastor, my guide, a word or two I say to you, how much I value all you do. You teach me how to live life right and follow Jesus day and night. To live and love the Christian way and to share the love of Christ each day. My pastor is wisdom. You're kind, you're wise, and never judging. Always focus on one thing, the word of God, and how I play my part. When others simply walk away, you always know what just to what what just what to say. When you gave her off from such a generous heart. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle, and makes his home. So carry your candle. Seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. And hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. And see now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. So carry your candle. We're our a family whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles, light up the sky. Pray to our Father in the name of Jesus. Let us a beacon in darkest times. So carry your candle, run to the dark. Deceive them for Hold out your can 
to our pastor. Our God has sent you to this place to lead you in the way that he would have us work and think and live from day to day. No matter the hour, whatever the need, you go the extra mile. Always ready and willing to share a comforting thought and a smile. We're grateful that you're here with us in service to, to our Lord. To teach us from our word and from God's word. word. And we're grateful that you're here with us to teach us from God's word. And we will try to do our best in service to our Lord. We thank you for your ministry, your guidance, and your care. This greatest blessing for your life is our most humble prayer. Thank you. Pastor, I want to thank you for all your great advice, for all your beautiful sermons, and keeping faith in my life. Thank you for all the gentle ways you walk with us through good times and bad. Our pastor has a thankless job in many different ways. He gets lots of helpful hints, but gets so little praise. The time he has not his own, he's not like any other man. Right when he thinks some time is his, there rings that phone again. Someone is sick or needs advice, they ask for him to call. And as God's man, they'll know he comes and hardly mind at all. The wisdom of King Solomon is all he needs each day to lead his flock and keep them safe from Satan's cunning ways. Like Jesus, he prays for sheep, prays faithful never dead. But when we lift our prayers to God, how many pray for him? Amen. So let's be faithful, be faithful to for that one who helps us day by day. Let's not forget our man of oh God who kneel down, down to pray. pray. Now, at this point, we're going to hear a special song by Jaden and Sanayo. Guess what? They were prayer service um, at, or prayer vigil on Friday night, and they said they want to give their little presentation to Pastor Cameron because everybody had a chance to say something to Pastor Cameron. And you know what? You will hear the rest. You don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last always. For there's a friend in Jesus, who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. But Jesus, I can take it. With him I know I can stand, no matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. So when your tests and trials, they seem to get you down, and all your friends and loved ones, 
Remember there's a friend named Jesus Who will wipe your tears away And if your heart is broken Just lift your hands and say Oh, I know that I can make it I know that I can stand No matter what may come my way My life is in your hands With Jesus I can make it With Him I know I can stand No matter what may come my way my life is in your hands. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, Isaiah wants to say something. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Maybe she said you. God bless you. God bless you. Good job. All right, go ahead. All right, I know we can do better. Let's give them a round of applause. Oh, goodness. I don't know about you, but I don't have to stretch my imagination to know that Lighthouse Ministries International is in good hands. The future is in good hands. Thank you much. They have encouraged us to carry our light. And as we can see, there is shining dears right. Thank you. Now, we have Lighthouse is a, a church. But you know a church has to be managed. And the pastor takes care of the spiritual management and leadership. And he also has a supporting cast by way of the board. The board plays a very important role in terms of supporting a pastor with his vision. Uh, everything that we have done from where we are until here. From, from the basement of the home of one of our faithful members to the school, spending several years in the school. And now, with his vision, we're standing in the sanctuary. As I like to say, this is the house that the, that the Lord gave us and the house that Jack built. <laughs> but you know it could not be be possible unless he had all of the all of the support that he could have by all of you members with your faithful tiding with everyone praying for him during the rough times your peaks and valleys in all of our lives and we all need prayers even the pastor and the pastor's family but the support in terms of managing church and making certain we want to thank you for entrusting us the board to uh, serve you in the best manner that we can now to really pay a tribute to what the board how we feel about a pastor we're going to call in sister Anne Marie one of our board members amen Hallelujah. Yes, 
I could stand there all day and church would not be over for me to tell you thanks, Pastor and Sister Cameron. So to shorten it, I did a little synopsis. Today I stand here to give God thanks for you, Pastors Oswin and Cora Diane Cameron. On behalf of the board, the elders, lay leaders, and all the other auxiliaries, we want to say thank you. Hebrews 13, 17 states, Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority, because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. As those who must give an account. That means they are giving account for us. So, do this so that their work will be joy, not burden, joy, for that would be no benefit to us. So that means when Pastor and Sister Cameron is standing here and giving us leadership, it is our duty to follow what they're telling us because they're not going to bring us down the wrong way. They're, they're steering us the right way because they have to give an account. Sometimes we don't want to take instructions, but word of God cannot lie. Hebrews 13, 17, you can go back and read on it. Pastor, we pray that we have been living up to the words of this verse. You have been an inspiration from day one, and we have been growing because of your teaching and your preaching. We thank you. Sister Cameron, you've taken the time to get doctors and medical people to come in here to give us instructions, to give us advice, to help us with health, and we thank you. And food. <laughs> Can't do without the food, right? You can see it on me. Thank you for your visions. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of it, bringing it to fruition. Without your vision, we would not be here. There's vision and there's dream. Sometimes you'll dream, and you wake in the morning, you forget what you dreamt about. With a vision, you can be sitting down, you're still thinking about it. You can be sleeping, you're thinking about it. You're working, you're thinking about it. A vision is something, it is there, and you have to work towards it to bring it to pass. So we thank you for your vision, your continued visions, and we continue to stand behind you as you lead us forward. We are so grateful for you and your family. We thank you for your love, your continued prayers for us, pulling us from our comfort zone, and allowing us to show our true potential. I had a comfort zone, but you saw in me what I didn't see in myself. And I thank you that I'm able to stand here to give thanks to you for allowing me to show that potential. Words cannot express our gratitude to you. The word in Proverbs 8.21 states, He that finds a wife finds a good thing. My spin on this, He that finds a pastor like you, my pastor, our pastor, finds a really good thing. Blessings for many more years, pastor. We continue to pray you up. We continue to pray for you and Sister Cameron and the family. We pray for long life. We pray that you will outlive all of us so you can be here to preach to everybody. <laughs> Thanks again, and we love you. And this is from the board and all the other auxiliary that did not get an opportunity to come forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sister Anne Marie, I don't think there's anyone that could have done a better job on the board in terms of expressing our appreciation. Thank you so much. At this time, we're going to call. We have known our pastor ever since he came to the U.S. Some of us may have heard about him prior, but there are those who actually knew him and grew up with him. And they know certain things that we don't know about. And I don't know, maybe uh, this is an opportunity where we're going to listen to someone who shared ministries with the pastor, a friend, a companion from way across the seas.
from, from Guyana. We're going to call and, and we know him. He's a friend of Lighthouse. We're talking about, about no one else but Reverend Brian Claxon. We're going to ask for him to share a ministerial tribute to our pastor. Thank you, Brother Chairman. First John chapter 2, verse 17, the Amplified Version, puts it this way. The world is passing away, and with the world is passing away, and with it its lust, the shameful pursuits, and ungodly longings. But the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes lives forever. I think in some way that really speaks about Reverend Osmond Cameron. Oswin Fitzherbert Cameron. He was born on the 5th of May, 1957, at a village called Bagosville, West Bank de Murara, in Guyana, to parents Virgil Cameron and Doris Cameron. His early education at St. Stephen's Anglican, which was at Parika, East Bank, Esupebo, then to Virgin Ocean Government School. These are the primary schools. And this was followed by attendance to the Universal College, which was a private high school. And that was located at Metamere Zog, West Coast Demerara, back in Guyana. He also attended a Christian Labor College. Still on educational part, later he attended the Wesleyan Bible College in Guyana, where he obtained his Master's in Christian Ministry. He went to Singapore at the Haggai Institute to do advanced leadership and management. Across here in the Maryland Uni University of Maryland, he did crisis counseling management. At the Georgetown University in Florida, not Georgetown, Guyana, he obtained his PhD in Christian ministry. But it was not just all church, there was work experience. Secularly, he worked at the Government Technical Institute in Georgetown, Guyana, in the, as part of the account staff from 1977 to 1983. Then at the Guyana Fisheries, and that was a big corporation. He worked there in the stores department, the stores manager, which was at the level of assistant superintendent, and he was there from 1983 to 1987. Ministry. He, his first pastor was an elder guy called Reverend Oscar and more, and that was at the Virgin Ugin Pilgrim Holiness Church, whereby now he was living. And after that, he was under the tutelage of the late Reverend Charles Van Tull from 1975 to 1977. After that, his association with Reverend Van Tull decreased according to his spare time from Bible College. His first pastorate. He was there, placed the pastor, the Vreden Hoop, the Sous Dyke, and Virgin Ugin Wesleyan churches, three churches, in 1976 to 1979. After that, from 79 to 83, he was given Vreden Hoop and Iflot to be in charge of. His third pastoral appointment was the Mahaika Wesleyan Church, 1983 to 1985. Then he went to Agricola, 85 to 86. 1992 to 2005, he was there at Charlotte Street, which is the main church, the flagship, and it really became a, a big flagship. Then, as you know, in 2005 to 2008, he came across here, and he was at National Wesleyan, and after 2000, and that part from 2008 to now he is here at Lighthouse Ministries International that was formed. God has got a reason for everything. And here it is. He was preparing him for some tough times. And he is able to, to come out bat in hand. Right. He continued in ministry in 19, when he was at, at Brickler, 19. 85, November to 1986, he was elected assistant district superintendent of the Guyana district. 
1986, he became superintendent and he remained superintendent of the Ghana district until he re relinquished that post in 2001. In between that, he was the regional superintendent, being in charge of the Ghana and Suriname district from 1987 to 1991. He was recognized for who he was and for his contributions to the Wesleyan Church and to the Evangelical Fellowship, so that he became vice president of the Ghana Evangelical Fellowship from 19, 1990 to 1994, and then after that, they decided it's time for you to be promoted. So he was then made president of the Ghana Evangelical Fellowship from two, 1994 to 2000. With that promotion, World Missions looked and they saw something in him, and they made him secretary to Wesleyan World Fellowship in 2000 to 2004, and then he was secretary to the International Conference from 2004 up to his departure. Well, it was not just work. He, he had some spare time. And during that time, he went a far away from where he was living, where we thought we had him tied. And he went many miles away, crossed creeks and bridges and used ferries and used a big ferry called it Torani. And he got engaged on the 3rd of January 1981. It was such that some of us, led by yours truly, even though I was the youngest, decided that we had to go and see who was this person that pulled our friend away, and I made it clear to them, I have to go and say whether I will give my stamp of approval. Even though I'm the youngest, I'm acting like the big brother. We went down there, and we were swept away. Cora Diane Roxon Edwards, just, not just swept him, swept us away too. After that, a few months later, he got married. They got married on the 3rd of October, 1981, and that was in Georgetown. They were there, and they had time for ministry and time for love life, and along the way came Juanita Elizabeth Lorelli Cameron. And that was in April, 1983. June 1986 came forth Adele Miriam Shirelli Cameron. April 1990 came forth Phoebe Angela Roxanne Cameron. And in June 1995, Brian Oswin Levi Cameron. You are well aware of the short history here at Lighthouse International, which started in March 2008, at the base of Brother Lenward and Sister Grace Isaacs. Then, as was stated just now, a number of years were spent at Mary Harris Mother Jones Elementary School. And finally, church, finally, at 10727 Tucker Street, Beltsville, Maryland. This is home. No one could put you out. There's no landlord. You see how late you want. This is home and God is here. Now there are branches in Guyana and in Suriname. And so the international part is clicking in. Now I want you to know something. There's my, my friend, a he is one who is extremely courageous and he really sets an example. We were playing a cricket match and we were against Newton Assemblies of God. And that day, everything went wrong for us. The boys, they were not bowling well. The Newton boys were hitting us all over the place. They eventually made 259. And I looked at Jack and Jack was bowling into the breeze, and he couldn't make it anymore. And it was just because the boys them that day were so uncooperative. I looked at him, and I said, 
Jack, give me the ball, let me bowl. He looked at me and for a while he thought and then he came to realize he really couldn't make it, but he was pushing himself. And I looked at this, never forgot that that match as, as the, the, the courage. I wouldn't tell you about the other part. The other part is that we drew the match. The match was scheduled to finish at 6 o'clock and at 2 after 6, Reverend Cameron, who was the captain, said, Brian, come off the field. <laughs> so I said, but the match, he said, time is 6 o'clock, now it's 2 after 6, come off the field. When I checked the scorebook, they made 259, and we were 59 for 9. <laughs> In some ways, people look on him as being very brash, and people who don't know him feel that he's this, he's that, he's the other. I know, and I can say clearly to each and every one, look, he's got his ways, but each and every one is different. We go about doing things differently. And so many times we are not who people think we are. We came up here in 1996 to the General Wesleyan General Conference. And we were in the same room. And there was a couple things that I wanted to speak to him about. And his thing was, he was the superintendent and I came as the lead delegate. So you understand. And I said, well, Jack, I want to talk to you about so, so, so. He said, Clarkson, I don't have time. So Jack, I want to talk to you. He said, I don't have time. So Jack, you got to listen to me. He said, I want to sleep. I said, well, you will not sleep until you listen to me. <laughs> and I spoke, and while he didn't agree with everything, positiveness came out of it, and there were life-changing things that came out. And that showed me when I went back, I didn't say what it was to people, like I haven't said here, but I said to people, Jack is not this person that you think. Jack got a soft spot, you know. It's just that he got his big voice, and but he got a soft spot. If you stand up to Jack, you'll see the soft spot. And so, here it is. He's my friend, and I'm so happy to be associated with him. He was part of me being saved. And he was part of that, encouraging me. And when some elder folks, well, Sister Cameron wants me to, to say that I attended a wedding. If I went to, to see who was this person, sure, I had to be at that wedding as an attendee. Right? And he has been there. And in the early, my early Christian life, when some elderly women were trying to bully me, and I came from the country, I was so afraid of them. He said, Clarkson, you don't bother with them. You don't bother with them. And so he helped me along the way to, to stand up to some bullies. Oh, I have, I mean, I've been asked to remind us that at my wedding, he was there. I got married far from Georgetown. I had him to deliver the message. And it happened that we were there and an hour into the wedding had come and my wife was, had not come. And phones were not about then. And um, so I said to him, I don't know, but I spoke to this girl and told her that she had to be on time. Now it's all of this time. Could you go? And I had to give him directions. And so he came and there was a great sigh of relief when he came and I took the kerchief out and I wiped them because... He ended up being the father. He ended up being the father of also. <laughs> so he was there, and through the years we've been friends, and through the years have not been easy times, but God has been faithful. And our friendship, we have been true to each other. Our friendship has been there, and that's it. God bless my brother. God richly bless you. Thank you, Reverend Claxton. So now we know and, you know, have an excerpt of the chronological historical trajectory of who we have uh, come to know as Pastor Oswin, Dr. Oswin Cameron, better known as Jack before, you know. And there is, there is a portion of this program that, uh, that is upcoming that we're going to have the pleasure of actually uh, 
viewing the boy and the girl. Those that were here on Wednesday know exactly what we're talking about, and I'm not going to say much about it. I will wait until this happens, and then I will make my comments on it. But this is something that I know you're going to definitely enjoy. Okay? It's going to bring the history to life. Now, I just want to pause this moment for you to take a close look at the stage. And, you know, so often we have members with uh, talent, and you actually sit on your talent. I don't know if you notice on the key, who is on keyboard this morning? Oh, Brother Abrams. Now, you know what? He's not actually sitting on his talent. He's sitting with and sharing his talent. Thank you so much. We want to give him a round of applause. And I'm quite sure that so there are many others that would surprise us when that time comes. You see, Pastor, again, we appreciate the fact that you have that gift that brings the very best out of us. Okay? Thank you. Now it's time to bring all the tithes in to the storehouse. And to do so, we're going to ask on for the offertory, and Juanita would lead us in this process. Thank you. Hands together for Lighthouse United Voices. Yes. As is customary here at Lighthouse, we want to declare over our finances today that when we give, that God will bless our giving. Good measure, press it down, shake it together, and cause it to overflow into our bosoms. So on the count of three, we'll all read together. One, two, three. My, my sowing and giving are producing my financial future. I expect abundance because I sow bountifully. The truth concerning giving has caused me to be a cheerful giver. My trust in God, not my circumstances, motivates me to give. God loves the way I give. Because I bring my whole time, my finances will be abundant, for God will guard them from the devourer. God gives me his ability for financial success. I have abundance for every good work. I am a blessed giver. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, today is Fourth Sunday, and usually we pick up our building fund. If you have your building fund offering, we'd like to ask you to uh, either you can give it to the usher directly or you can bring it on next week Sunday because we don't want to stall the service for too long. Um, if you don't have your building fund this week, that's all right. You can bring it on next week or probably at the end of the service we'll do that if we have time. But we're going to sing as the ushers pick up the offering. To God be the glory. This is an old school hymn. And I know Pastor loves, we grew up hearing these songs. And so we want to give God glory today for the great things he has done. Thank you, Pastor Claxton. We disappeared. But he gave us such, oh, right there. He gave us such a nice history of Pastor. Beyond the formalities that we usually get. So, Reverend Jack, to God be the glory. 